And before the outbreak of COVID-19, a relationship between health workers and government in Nigeria uh, was um, nothing but smooth. A recurring strike is one thing in the sector that the government and the people are familiar with, although with expected show consequences. With the COVID-19 pressure on healthcare system, the face-off between the health workers and government resurfaced again, despite several gentlemen agreements in the past. Now, joining me in the studio is uh, in this um, critical sector is um, a public relations officer of Trade Union Congress, as well as a former health sector trustee of uh, Saturai, which um, means the Senior Staff Association of University Student Hospital Research Institute and Associated Institution, Kende Anigoki. Kende, uh, thanks for joining us on the news. Thank you, Zika. Uh, one would like to say or think that uh, with the pronouncement given by the federal government over the weekend that the, the sword has been sh put in, his, in its sheet and everything is now well between the government and medical workers. Now, you were here today basically uh, to oppose that notion that I have, and perhaps a lot of Nigerians have. What really are the issues in this, in, you know, between the government and medical workers? Okay, thank you, Zika. Actually, since COVID-19 pandemic started, everybody in the health sector received the same hazard allowance, and that is 5,000 Naira flat rate. Doctor, nurses, medical lab scientists, engineers, um, accountants, name it, everybody in the health sector received flat rate for hazard allowance. But Sorry, encourage... when you say health sector, it means everyone, is it everyone in health sector received hazard allowance? Do you mean 5, everyone working? Rate. Do you mean everyone working in the hospital environment? Exactly. So that has been the norm. But to encourage everyone in the sector, government, the presidential task force decided to give three month inducement stroke hazard allowance on COVID-19 uh, I mean, on COVID-19 for all the members of the health sector, whether doctors, nurses, pharmacies, accountants, name it, everybody in the sector. And there was an MOU to that effect and some other things. On the 21st of April, 2020, there was the MOU. And in that MOU, on issue of remuneration on the inducement, it was agreed that they will pay 50% for those on current salary. That's current is consolidated, uh, uh, consolidated air salary structure. And then we have comments, which is consolidated medical salary structure. And they classify in such a way that those on comments will get 50% of their basic salary consolidated salary, and then those on comments, on coins, we get 50% of their basic salary. Then volunteers who volunteer to come out to be part of this war, we get additional 20%. If you are classified as core health professional, you will get additional 20% if you're a volunteer in the isolation center. And then if you are classified as non-clinical, um, non because that was the nomenclature used then, non-clinical, like accountants, engineers. The drivers, basically? Drivers and clerk and the rest of other people that work together. They are classified as non-clinical. And they said those who volunteer in that respect will get additional 10%. But to everybody's surprise, when it comes to implementation, government is now playing what Afrobeat legend called government magic. The, and what is the government magic? They are paying. In fact, they said they should compile the list. And what we have observed is that institutions that are following the obnoxious circular that came out in June by Federal Ministry of Health, they are the ones they are paying. That's those who categorize and compile the data of staff members and put those that are non-clinical 
put 10% working for them. Those are the ones they are implementing and those are the ones they are paying. But those who compile based on the MOU, they are not paying them. They are not paying those institutions. Are you saying and the volunteers are not being paid? You say? Who, who are those that are not being taken care of in this, in what you just uh, mentioned? What is happening is that they are compromising the MOU in the payment implementation. It is now another nomenclature is coming out that our members are being classified as non-health workers. And that is the false classification. Anybody on coins is health workers. And anybody on comments is a doctor, a clinician. But our members who all before now, they classify them as non-clinical. Now they are now being sub-classified as non-health workers. We are all essential workers in the health sector. And that all along, we are on the same page. Everybody knows that. But it's just of recent, this obnoxious circular came out in the Ministry of Health. And they just said they should compile very, very fast. And they are saying, like engineers, drivers, cleaners. accountants, cleaners, clerks, hospital ward maids, and the rest, they are being classified as non-health workers, which is strange to what we know all along. Which is strange. In fact, we have those two salary structure in the health sector, coherence and comments. It's only those in the ministry who are on grade, grade level salary because we are not on grade level. You know, for, we are on consolidated salary structure. You know, for, for a better understanding, you know, when we say health workers, one would right, like to think that uh, those who administer care to patients, the nurses, the doctors, the pharmacists, dentists, and all those Lab people. Scientists. Exactly. You know, so those are the people that one might consider as health workers. Now, are you saying that the, the, the challenge well, that is has before... Not been the case. Okay. All along, everybody who work in the hospital, in the health sector, is regarded as health workers. That has been the norm, and that has been, that has been the categorization, even in the salary structure. It's, it's either you are under coins or under commerce. And then those in the ministry, they, are, we, they, they pay them on grade levels. But this obnoxious classification that just came out recently is far, far foreign to what we have always known. So are you saying now that this... And when the MOU was signed, that was not in the MOU. This was just introduced in the Ministry of Health. You know, earlier you talked about um, volunteers being paid some 20%. Additional. Additional 20%, non-clinical, 10%. Are exactly. you saying now that... And those were in the original MOU that was signed by government and representative of the union. So now that there's a classification that, that of... That is representative. Now that, that there's a classification of non-health workers, are you saying they're not getting any stipend in addition? The issue is that when everybody... In the, in, in the, iso I mean, in the classified isolation center is getting, is supposed to get 50% based on what is in the MOU. They are reneging from that MOU, voluntarily signed by both party, parties. government, and the union. And they are paying 10% instead of 50% that's supposed to cut across everyone. Mm -hmm. okay. And 10% is supposed to be additional for those who are volunteer who are non-clinical as it is embedded in the MOU. Okay. But what they are introducing now is shrink to the MOU and this is creating division in the sector. The health sector is a multi-professional sector and it's a teamwork. All over the world it's a teamwork. As it is in Nigeria, the team is not functional because the sector has not been fair to other health professionals and health workers, but they have been favoring just one particular profession. Um, but that is not the issue now because as of today, in the fight against COVID, we are all together, we all agree, and we are all working together Obviously. as a team. The, the doctor so we don't have issue with whether enemy or Duesu. Duesu and enemy, everybody is working together. But it is government now that is creating division by 
this implementation. No, and I would like to wonder why the government would come into you know your union to create the vision if you don't allow the government to do that. Yeah, because and that is the reason we are speaking out because injury to one is injury to all. As I am, I'm a medical laboratory scientist. When they pay my institution, which is loot, they will pay me fifty percent. But injury to one is injury to all. That is the spirit of unionism across the globe. And we are not going to compromise that principle. What has been signed in black and white voluntarily, they were not forced to do that. They voluntarily did that. Everything embedded in that MOU between governments, Juesu, enemy, must be implemented to the letter. That is where we stand. On Aburi, we stand. We are not threatening now, and we are not issuing ultimatum. We are begging those who represent government in the Ministry of Health and in the Ministry of Labor to do the needful. Now we are begging. We are begging that they should do the needful and not create further division in the sector. Because the team relationship is not so well. And what they are doing will further weaken the team. Because no matter what you buy, now everybody is, is obvious to everybody, nobody can run anywhere again. We are all locked down. And we can't run anywhere. Our leaders can't run to all those places that they run to to take care of their health challenges. Now everybody has to manage the sector, the health sector we have built for ourselves in this country. And no matter the equipment that government buy, if the team is not if the team is not working as a team, we can't get results. We can't get good results. We can't get effective healthcare service. And Government representatives should not break the team, should not break the team functionality that is just coming up, that we are just beginning to have. Because that team relationship has not been there for long. Since 1985, that decree was done by Babangida under Olukwe, I mean, under Babangida, influenced by Olukwe Ransom Kuti, the health sector has not known peace. But with COVID fights, we are coming together. Government should not break that functional team relationship that is just coming up. All right, well, um, rightly said. You know, one would like to think that the government has done so much, you know, for the health sector. I remember when, or the advent of COVID-19 in the country, uh, where Nigerians were saying, you need to cater for uh, frontline workers, who yeah. are the medical professionals yeah. in every, on every level, either drivers or cleaners, because they are also uh, putting themselves at risk. We are all because, exposed. You know, we are all exposed. Yeah, you talked about teamwork. Now, in, in about a week, the government has released close to 18 million naira to workers in the health sector. Are you saying that um, these monies are just given to maybe the doctors, nurses, dentists, pharmacies, and um, the lower staff are disregarded? Is that well, the picture? Well, the issue is that I have no issue against the doctors. Or, and the, what is happening is that the healthcare professional will be paid or are being paid 50%. I'm one of them. I'm one of the frontliners and I'm a medical lab scientist. But the challenge is that the cleaners, the, the non-clinical staff. The non-clinical staff should be taken care of. They are all equally exposed. Even those, I understand in some centers, security men go, they turn out positive. And some, like in loot, we don't collect gate pass again because we don't want our security men to turn out positive. And there is no one. You see, Clark carry five from one table to another, from one office to another, and are we sure that who handled the file before the other is not a carrier? And you are in the lab, engineers come to maintain our equipment. If we have issue with light in the lab, it's engineers that will come and fix it. If our equipment is, non, is having issue, challenge, it's the biomedical engineers that will come and fix it. Are they not exposed? Are they not supposed to be taken care of? I'm speaking for, on behalf of Satri today, for our members that are being chained or that are not being taken care of based on the MOU. Injury to one is injury to all. Everyone must be taken care of. You know, Nard, that's and the, it should, it should the be national, in the spirit of the MOU. 
that was signed initially. That was signed initially right, now, the National the Association of, April. of Resident Doctors just came out from a strike. I know you've said that okay. this is just a pleading, you know, time. You're pleading yeah. with the government to adhere to, to do the, needful the MOU to, signed to respect earlier. the MOU as but signed it, on the 18th of April. You know, it, it means that at the end of the day, the next thing you know, Satra is going to, you know, resolve to is to go on a strike. And I'm sure well, Nigerians are tired. We have not tired. said that. Okay. We have not said that. But they should not push us to the wall. They shouldn't push Satra to the wall. Because we are not strike monger. And as it is, the COVID pandemic is not a child's play. We know how much is, I mean, we know how much effect it has taken to on our economy and other sector of our nation and other nations of the world. So it's not the best time to go on strike, but we are not even talking about going on strike now. But we are begging, we are begging government to do the needful. Because if we are pushed to the wall, I won't say more than that. I won't say more than that. So just to re-echo uh, what you stated earlier, I want to know, how would you like this to be resolved? If the government tells you that they are short, short of funds, if the government gives a million and one excuses why the situation is, is the way it is now, that cannot would be the such case. I understand? That cannot be the case. Government cannot say they are short of funds. They cannot say they are short of funds. Because we have been on, at the receiving end. 2018, we were on strike. And April and May salary was not paid. Up to now, we were in the industrial courts. And at the industrial courts, it was established and agreed that the strike was legal and, and that it is wrong for government to have deducted the salary. And up to now, it's, since March 2019, that has been released from the industrial courts. Up to now, they are yet to, to correct that. Issue of negotiation of salary, or uh, adjustment of salary for, for JOSU members, since 2014, and that of the medical doctor's comments have been adjusted three times since 2011. Up to now, that of Dresso has not been amended. And that was part of the agreement in the court that they should go and, we should go and negotiate. And up to now, they have not been able to sit down to negotiate and adjust coins as against what has been done to comments three times. So, but what I'm saying is that well, since this COVID pandemic started, they have said they are going to look into that. Government has promised to look into that, that we should give them time. But what we are saying is that that which have been agreed on and voluntarily signed in black and white, 21st April 2020, that MOU should be adhered to. They shouldn't bring in what is not. This, you know, these people make me remember fella Nicola Pukuti, government magic. Fella said they go to Davaru everywhere. We don't need that. We need to think out of the box and even restart our economy and it's an opportunity for us to reset, to reset our system and to move forward in a better direction and see what system we are building for ourselves. Apart from the health sector, what about that sector? Oh. We need to rediscover ourselves and channel this country in accurate direction that will give us the, the Nigeria of our dream. That is part of what COVID pandemic has brought to us. Hopefully. And you know, hopefully the government will also we also hear the, the part of the government uh, for this alleged religion on the MOU you talked about. So maybe uh, the government would also have one or two things to say concerning this. Thank you so much, Ken De Thank uh, you, Zika. Uh, uh, former health sector trustee of uh, South Rai. South Rai. Right. Thank you so much for joining us on the news. Thank you, Zika. All right. The news continues shortly. Please stay with us.